you're more likely to win the lottery and get a track picked by a music supervisor. We've heard this countless times. That is pointless and risky. We're also told to trust the experts. I highly recommend you find representation. Submitting your music to a supervisor to me feels about the same as going to the you know grocery store every day and buying a lot of ticket and calling that your retirement plan. I don't know any music supervisors that work direct with artists. Content creators like myself even have said that you're much less likely to get your music placed on a TV show if you go directly to a supervisor. But what if we've been lied to this whole time? After analyzing hundreds of different interviews, including ones I've done myself, I've discovered three different tactics that didn't just put me in the same room as some of these music supervisors, but also inherently made them like my music even more without going through a rep. Now imagine that you're going to get your driver's license for the first time. You're super nervous, your hands are gripping the steering wheel, and you're ready to go. But all of a sudden, you have car issues. You almost hit a pedestrian, and your driving instructor had a bad day. That could literally be your music supervisor that you're pitching to. Someone helped turn your red lights in the green lights, so buckle up and let's hit the road. So just like driving for everybody's safety, you gotta understand the rules of the road and what traffic signs mean. This is exactly like following a supervisor's brief. This is one of the biggest pet peeves of a music supervisor, because although it's quite simple, you gotta understand how to read directions and follow them to the T. Because if you don't, it's like speeding through a school zone at 60 miles an hour, instant failure on a driving test. For instance, if a supervisor asks for something that's more a beat or a pop track for a summer scene, but you submit like this melancholic ballad that has the word summer in it, just because you feel like it's your best work, it's not gonna work. Psych! You just ran a red light. If music supervisors are our driving instructors and they're checking off each specific need for the scene, if you're not ticking those boxes, you're not only failing the test, but they're probably not gonna work with you ever again. So don't just glance at a brief. Make sure you study it, break it down, read it not once, not twice, but eight times. And make sure you know exactly what signs you're looking for. But if you only do this, this is not gonna help you ace the test or nail that sync placement. Because what if you're on the road and you're with your driving instructor and all of a sudden the check engine light comes on in your car and it sputters to a complete stop halfway through the test. This is exactly what happens if you submit an unfinished track. Cause now both of y'all stranded and you about to get roasted. <laughs> If it's not mixed and mastered to broadcast standards, you bound to run into trouble. Cause music soups aren't just looking for good music. They need a track that's ready to go. Why? Because they're normally on these really strict deadlines and they have to go through a multitude of other steps outside of just, oh, this sounds cool. Let me just throw this on the video. You gotta run through legal, double check with the directors, project managers. We actually hear this kind of stuff all the time through the teaching program I run that helps music creators get into sync licensing much faster by actually interviewing music supervisors, sync agents, libraries, owners, people like that, and getting feedback on our music every month in order to help us get more placements. As a matter of fact, we're opening that community up to the general public if you've already registered for the Shades of Sync conference that we're having in the month of August. So make sure you come through and get more insight on your music. But the third and most important thing is the one that most people miss. Let's say while you're driving on the road, you're headed back, you maybe start to chum it up with the music supervisor. So now you're pretty cool. You think you're going to at least get a passing grade on your test. And all of a sudden they ask you, hey, I forgot to check your ID and your insurance. What ID and insurance? Driving a car without insurance, at least in the States, is mad illegal. And this is something that'll completely ruin the relationship and you're never going to work with that music supervisor ever again, I guarantee it. Not understanding or ignoring the legal usage rights of your song, whether that be samples that are laced in it or having songwriters on it that aren't necessarily approving the song to be used in a certain TV show or movie is the best way to ruin your career in sync. Because if they find out that your music is not clear just because there's like eight different writers on it and two of them are aren't able to follow up and give them permission to use the song, or just because there's samples in it that you can't clear. It not only disrupts their workflow, they have a ton of other projects they're working on. It also harms your professional reputation, which is hard to build back up. Because believe it or not, the sync world is not as big as you think it is. This is the main reason why most supervisors just don't even want to work with indie artists without having some type of representation with a sync agent or a music library. They don't want to work with artists that put their job at risk. So before you pitch your music, be sure that you fully understand the legalities of what you're doing how you're making it, and the permissions and rights you need. It's the equivalent of getting on the road with a driver's license, insurance papers, so that whenever you possibly may get pulled over, you're able to show, yo, I made this on my own. If you follow these three steps, you're going to be a magnet for music supervisors to gravitate to, as long as your music's dope. Because after you work with that one supervisor and they give you your S-class license for being a great asset to helping them do their job, they're gonna tell all their homies like, yo, I love this artist, they make really cool music, and all their business is handled. So now you're on the roadway to actually getting more sync placement which is amazing. But what if you want to get on the freeway and actually hit those placements a lot faster? If you want to learn how to take your car into fifth gear and start hitting placements at light speed, check this video out here and like and follow to get synced.